we are here with our amazing state reporter, Shelby Sigmund. Shelby, why are you here today with us at McCutcheon High School? Oh, for the poverty dinner. I mean, the Thanksgiving dinner. We, they're not supposed to know it's a poverty dinner. Shh. The Thanksgiving dinner. There we go, Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, welcome, everybody. Tonight, dinner is going to look different than anything we've experienced so far. As you can see, we have been split into three sections of the cafeteria, which represent the three segments of the world. Let's take a moment to introduce you to people in these three segments. If you are sitting over here, you represent 15% of the world's population with a per capita income of $10,726 or more. You're fortunate enough to be able to afford a nutritious daily diet. Since many of you exceed your daily requirement of calories, you are likely to face health problems such as heart disease and diabetes. Most of you don't worry about getting health care. You have access to the best medical care in the world. It's a given that your children will attend school. The only uncertainty is how many years they will study after high school. In terms of access to credit, you turn down more offers than you can count. You and your family live in a comfortable and secure home. You probably own at least one car and two televisions. When you take your annual vacation, you don't worry about your job disappearing in your absence. You have access to virtually everything you need and the security to enjoy it. If you are sitting over here, you represent roughly 35% of the world's population. You earn between $876 and $10,725 a year. The levels of access and security you enjoy vary greatly. You live on the edge. For many, it would take losing only one harvest to drought or a serious illness to throw you into, into poverty. You probably own no land and may work as a day laborer a job that pays a measly amount. But it's better than nothing. Your small income allows for some use of electricity, and you may, alternatively, you may have left your family to go work in the city. You hope that the money you're working, or you're making from your less than minimum wage job will eventually be enough to return to your family and create a better life for you and your family. Let me share the story of a, of a real life person in this middle income group. Romeo Ramirez is 13 years old. When he was 13 years old, he left his home in Guatemala to go to Mexico to find farm work. Two years later, he made the difficult journey to the United States to pursue the American dream. But the promises of that dream were unattainable, and instead, Romeo toiled in the fields of Florida where he needed to pick nearly two tons of tomatoes every day just to earn $50 a day. If you were sitting on the floor, you represent the majority of the world's population roughly 50%. Your average income is less than $875 a year, about $2 a day. Although many of you earn much less. Every day is a struggle to meet your family's basic needs. Finding food, water, and shelter can consume your entire day. For many of you women, it would not be uncommon to have to walk five to 10 miles a day to get water, spend several more hours working in the fields, and of course, taking care of the children. Many of you are frequently hungry. It's quite likely that you don't get the minimum number of calories your hard work and life requires. Many of you are homeless or living in structures so flimsy that a hard rain or strong wind can cause a major catastrophe. Even though education is the single most powerful weapon against poverty, school is a luxury few of your children will ever experience. Most girls don't even bother to dream about school. Adequate health care is out of question. For many of you, early death is all too familiar, with many of you, many mothers expecting to lose one or two children before they turn five. If you are lucky enough to work, you are probably a tenant farmer who must give your landlord 75% of your harvest. Or you may get occasional work as a day laborer at a large pl plantation, growing bananas, sugar, or coffee for export. You reap few benefits from your crops. You prefer to grow food your children can eat. Meet Addis Jamada. Addis lives in the Rift Valley of Ethiopia, which has been plagued by chronic drought. Her husband died and left her with seven children. In good times, they ate one meal a day. Her children have suffered from malaria and malnutrition. Addis had three goats, but was forced to sell them in a tent to feed her children and overcome these problems. I have nothing left to sell, she says. Take a moment to look around you now. 85% of you are not seated at the high income tables. 
85% of you do not share in the bounty of our planet. Here is some news that will affect several of you. No one can choose the circumstances into which they are born. Some people have the good fortune of changing their lives for the better, but for the most, circumstances of life are determined by factors outside of their control. Here are Rodolfo, Alejandro, Liana, Juan, Beatrice, and Maria. You each live within a one-hour bus ride of San Salvador, El Salvador's capital. A maquila, a garment assembling factory that produces clothes for a popular American company, which finds it cheaper to produce their goods in Central America and then ship the finished goods back to the U.S., has just opened its doors in downtown San Salvador. Once hired, you will earn a few dollars a day, and you anticipate your life becoming much more secure. You will be able to you will be able to feed your family on a regular basis, and you have hopes that you might build yourself a small house if you can say anything within the next few years. I now invite you six to make a place in the middle class, middle income group, but before you go. You are Dana Reese, and these are your five siblings, Melinda, Luisa, Patricio, Javier, and Ernesto. You are fortunate to have a job and to be able to generate income for your family. Your siblings cannot find paying jobs given the poor state of the economy. All of you rely on your income to survive. You've been working for several years in another older factory in San Salvador, and despite dangerous working conditions and low wages, you've never jeopardized your income by complaining. What good would it do? There are no unions for a factory worker like you. Several months ago, however, a new shift manager was hired, and he has been making your work life intolerable. Hoping that your spotless record will speak for itself, you go to the floor manager and voice your concerns. Your direct manager denies your allegations, and you are fired. You must now find another job. You have been living week to week, and you have no savings and nothing to live on until you hopefully find work. I invite you and your siblings to take the seats of those six from the low income group who managed to find jobs in a new factory in town. You are Peter Grissom, a middle manager at a large US based coffee company. You are a hard worker and a devoted father to you and girls. When the work market price of coffee, the world market price of coffee reached its lows in 2001, your company was paying less for coffee than ever before, but it did not lower the prices it charged to U.S. customers. When prices rose, your company was quick to pass on the cost to consumers, and your company's profits continued to increase. Congratulations, maybe you'll take a Caribbean vacation. While you're deciding what to, how to spend your bonus, please remain standing while I introduce two people you wouldn't normally get to meet. You are Joseph Cromer. You have once again been laid off from your job picking coffee beans, which allowed you to provide basics for your family. Uh, your employer was driven deep into debt in 2001 when the price of coffee hit a 30 year low. And because you are struggling to recover, we cannot afford to hire you for permanent work and pay you a stable wage. Please join the low income group. Please, meet Lillian. You live in the same village as Joseph, and you eke out a living by selling maize and other vegetables from your garden in the local market. Because Joseph and your other customers are unable to find steady work, and because of the local coffee plantation's issues, you will receive only one half portion of rice today because you cannot afford enough corn. No one can choose the circumstances into which they are born. Some people have the good fortune of changing their lives for the better, but for most, they're left to deal with their lot in life. Even though our meals all look different, we'll be thankful for what we have. Enjoy your meal. We can only see the class of people with whom we see. So, how does eating over here make you feel? Okay, I guess. What are your thoughts on all of this? I don't know. You don't have any thoughts at all? No. How does it feel to be sitting over here in the low income group and eating a bowl of rice between five people and then sitting and watching other people get full stomachs? How does that make you feel? Um, it was not great. It was, we're still hungry. Did you realize a few things while you were going through this? Yeah, definitely. 
Thank you. It's great. Sitting over here in the middle income, how did you feel watching other people eat rice while you get a full meal? Um, it is nice to see that we all have enough food to go around. Um, I, I mean, I, I feel bad and watching you guys all kind of look hungry over there and uh, are intently watching us eat our own food and uh, we feel bad and I would like to share but I'm not allowed to. That is how I feel. Tell me how it felt not having any food at all and watching everybody else with some kind of food. It sucked. I'm so hungry. And, you know, just looking around. Oh, they got food, and then they would over here. Over this way. At this time, I just want to introduce um, our state rep state representative from District 27, Sheila Quaker. And we just want to know what you thought sitting over here in the poverty section. Thank you. I'm, if you don't mind, I'm going to go over with Joe Icon because Joe, if you'll come over here a little bit. Uh, can you all hear me? Uh, Joe Icon is from Lafayette Urban Ministry. And many of you know that Joe deals with this every single day uh, at the Lafayette Urban Ministry. So I really appreciate the fact that you folks have done this to show just what some people go through. Not just in the United States, where we have many hungry people, but also uh, through many countries. Uh, now, I, I gave my rice to these folks uh, because I just don't happen to like rice, so I'd be on my rice. I like to cook rice. Um, that's the, you know, the dark brown kind. But anyway, the bottom line is that this gives you a great example. Uh, and I'm so pleased to see so many schools involved. Uh, not just McCutcheon, but uh, quite a few of the schools involved. Uh, and I think it, it really teaches a lesson that we all need to know. Uh, many of you may know Betty Stansbury, uh, her aunt. Uh, Kate Stansberry, and maybe her daughter was here, uh, but she went to Mayflower Mill and she was a member of Harris Aquinas. And Kate, with her daughter, started, Betty and Kate started the backpack program. How many of you remember that, Mayflower Mill? Some of you might have been at Mayflower Mill at the time. Well, they did that in their garage. Uh, and it became such a popular program that now, Harris Aquinas, Rotary, everybody's working with the backpack program, in, including Lafayette Urban Ministry. Wonderful program so that kids have food over the weekend. Many of the children said that they were very hungry over the weekend and didn't have any food, uh, and certainly not the right kind of food uh, that they needed. Healthy, good fruit, vegetables. Uh, so I really appreciate the fact that you folks have done this. This is so timely. I know you young people didn't know that the Philippines uh, was going to have that, that terrible typhoon storm. But as many of you know, uh, people are stealing. Uh, they're, they're running into homes and ransacking other homes uh, because the, the food has not received, been received yet. However, today, the planes are flying into Leyte, I think some are, and other uh, places, other small islands, and uh, they have large helicopters that are dropping the food. Now, why would they give it to the government? Well, they said they can't give it to the government because the government is corrupt and won't get the food to the people. Now, that's very sad because we know in this country when Katrina or something else happens, uh, we, we make sure that our Marines and our National Guard get the food to the people who need it, although it has taken some time in the United States too. So I just want to thank you so much for doing this and showing just what the problems are and how different groups can help each other. I enjoyed your statement that you felt guilty and would like to give us some food. Did you like that? So we'll look for you in leadership in that area. I'd like to give the microphone to Joe Mikan, a former state representative. Uh, from the Warren County and Lafayette area, and like I mentioned, Joe deals with this every day, so he can tell you a lot. And remember, our food stamps, our SNAP, has been cut to about $36 worth. I, I'm getting a lot of calls from folks who have food stamps, and, and Joe can tell you about that because even more food is needed now than it was before. So Joe, 
I'd like to hand the microphone to you, and thank you, everybody, very much. Thank you, Representative Plinker. It's good to be with you this evening. Thank you. And uh, it's uh, good to be here with uh, FFA tonight, and uh, how appropriate it is uh, for the future farmers of America to be taking time out uh, to be fitting some curriculum into your very busy schedule uh, to think about world hunger, uh, to think about uh, domestic hunger. Uh, what, what better thing as uh, those of us who uh, come from agriculture and have a background in agriculture, our business is food, our business is livestock, our business is feeding people, and so it is most appropriate for us to think about the distribution of what we grow and what we produce, um, how that gets out in a just way uh, to the world and uh, to our nation. Uh, it's very appropriate because uh, we are learning, and uh, in not too long, uh, many of you here will be thinking about higher education, many of you are already thinking about higher education. Um, many of you, if not most of you, will be studying agriculture in some way, shape, or form, and uh, how lucky we have been in our community to be here in the shadow of uh, one of the greatest ag schools on the planet, uh, Purdue University, and how lucky we have been over the past six years to have right here in our midst two World Food Prize winners, uh, Dr. Nelson and Dr. Ajeta. Dr. Nelson grew up on a tomato farm, uh, not two hours south of here. Uh, his family farm raised tomatoes for um, world gold. And he, he learned through that process that tomatoes don't transport very well. They spoil, and a lot of hard work goes to waste. So, so through his efforts, and through his studies, and through his research at Purdue, he found ways to keep tomatoes fresh as they are transported across the ocean to feed hungry people. And so now, as you see these big tanker ships cross the oceans, uh, due to Dr. Nelson's work uh, here at Purdue, those tomatoes don't spoil, and they go to feed hungry people. Dr. Regenda did a similar thing with producing sorghum in third world countries and finding the right seed varieties that now feed thousands and tens of thousands of people. So whatever it is that you do with your future, wherever it is that you go, um, it, it's really appropriate that the lessons that you're just beginning maybe to experience tonight um, go with you and uh, that you always keep in the back of your mind. Uh, that is, whether you're working on seed production or whether you're working on agricultural production or machinery, wherever your future takes you, uh, that you think of the responsibility and you think of the uh, duty that you have to make sure that uh, the, the abundance that God has given us all um, goes in a fair way to everybody on the planet. Thank you very much. I don't know who gets this next. Well, I think Joe and Sheila did a really um, outstanding job, so I'll keep my comments short. Um, I was lucky enough to get placed in the high income segment, the, the upper 15%, and uh, I'm sorry Joe and Sheila, I'm sorry you kind of got the short end of the stick in this deal tonight. Um, but, you know, we were talking over dinner um, about our, our impressions of this event, and, you know, what we kind of came to was we felt really guilty. I've heard that word echoed a lot throughout the room. We felt guilty that the majority of the room was sitting here with not enough to eat, and we had more than we needed. In fact, we've all got leftovers on our plates because we couldn't eat it all. They gave us pumpkin pie. Can you believe that? Pumpkin pie. Um, but I hope that if you guys take something from this tonight, I hope it's not just feeling guilty. Um, because all of us in this room are very fortunate, and I think this um, demonstrates that really well on a global scale. Um, and it's really easy to get really sad um, and overwhelmed by uh, these big problems like poverty and hunger. Uh, but I think kind of going to, speaking to what Joe and Sheila have already said, there are literally hundreds of ways that you can get involved 
in helping do something about it. So that's what I really hope that you guys all, all take with you tonight, is not just feeling guilty and bad, but having a fire and a passion inside you to actually go out and do something about it. Um, there are numerous organizations, there are food pantries in our community that always need help. Lafayette Urban Ministry has outstanding programs that you can help with. Um, food Finders is always looking for volunteers as well. Um, so I encourage you to get involved and um, help us change this trend. I think that if we all really work together, um, this, what you see in this room today doesn't have to be the reality. So thank you guys so much for your leadership and for bringing this to the forefront.